Netflix, you don't need cable. Hop on YouTube, welcome to the hood table. Where we chop up local and global events vocally. You don't really want to miss out on these conversations. Just joke a little, huh? Laugh a little, get that wine in your system for your glass a little. Expose current events, talk trash a little. You never know these opinions might clash a little. They addicted to the content, got them binge watching. You don't like it, then you want invited. Bet your friends watching in the house and your job parking lot before you clock in. They don't want to miss a second of this HT content. Everybody think they got something to say, so it's an open invitation. Bring it to the table, but if you come whack, just know we ain't buying in. We gon' probably turn your back until you start try again, huh? Yeah, welcome to the hood table. You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. Yeah, welcome to the hood table. You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. Hey! Hey, what's up? Come on in, come on in, Carrie Ray. I see you dancing on in to our theme song. Go ahead, do your thing, girl. Do your dance, do your dance. Hey. <laughs> and thank you, the Miss O. She is a new member. Thank you for becoming an official member of the Hood Table. And anybody else who might want to join it is only $1.99 per month. And you can just click the join button right next to the subscribe button to become an official member. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Yes, my niece Pooh got skills. Y'all about to hear all about her very soon because she is blowing the hell up. And I don't know if y'all heard me the other day, but she was invited to one of the DT um DTP uh studios, music recording studios, you know disturbing the peace you know luda yes so yeah that's my niece the one who created our the hood table song so she wrote the lyrics for our the hood table theme song but yes she is on her way about to blow up already got one of her songs on a tyler perry tv show of sisters this season so yes i'm very 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 proud of her very proud of her and her name is thailand music and you can find her information in every video of mine in the description box now Y'all, I'm sorry I was a little late. I was supposed to start at 9, but I had to do a little commentary on T.I., you know, one of my favorite rappers who was locked up over in the Netherlands. Um, He got arrested, and he did get out, but anyway, y'all can check that video out that I did if y'all haven't heard about it, but yeah, it's all over the news, all over the news. You said you don't even watch the show, just come here to listen, <laughs> to listen to the song. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. You know, the shy, um, I've been actually trying to get my son to watch it, my uh 20-year-old here, because every now and then we give each other um different ideas to watch on like Netflix, Hulu, uh Disney, or you know, BT Plus. You know, we have all these apps, just all the apps. And so um I had told him, I said, Do you watch the shy? He was like, the shy. I'm like, the shy. I'm like, do you watch the shy? He was like, no. I said, it's on his fourth season and you ain't never watched the shy. And he's like more of what I would think would be in the age group to watch that show. And he's like, I don't know nothing about no shy. I said, ask your friends. And you know how kids are. They have like group chats and stuff. I'm like, go in the group chats and ask some of your friends, do they watch the shy? And I said, I can bet you money. They all know what I'm talking about. And they did. And he still ain't started watching, but he might. He was like, I just got too many other shows to watch, mom, you know. But anywho, anywho, um, this is the finale, the season finale of The Shy, season four that we're going to be reviewing this evening. Um, season four, episode 10. Uh, I would, you know, say that this is one of the shows that has like the least amount of episodes every season, but it's always the same amount. It's always the same number, 10 episodes per season, which is kind of good if you're trying to binge watch because it's only like, or if you get behind, you know, it's only like 10 episodes. But anywho, anywho, this uh, particular episode, the finale was called A Raisin in the Sun. So just for a little recap, first, let's start off with a little bit of recap. Um, Last episode, uh, I had said that I just didn't know like which direction the show was going to go after what happened to Marcus. 
because Jake and Gemma, you know, after realizing they had left Jake's weed at her house, you know, they had took off back to her crib for fear of her father coming across his stash. But Jake most definitely wasn't expecting to see her father there lying on the ground bleeding to death. And Trig was there trying to assist Marcus, her father, while Duda was just sitting off to the side cleaning the blood off of his cane. Like he was just doing everyday normal activity. And then since Duda had told Trig not to call the ambulance, I wasn't too sure if Marcus was going to make it or not. And I sure wouldn't want to be in Jake's position. Um, he couldn't even at the end of last at the end of last episode, he couldn't even look at her, you know, because he knew uh, the position that her father was in back at their house. So that leads us up to this episode. And basically, we started off at the scene where Duda had just beat the entire brakes off of Marcus, which is, of course, Gemma's uh, father. Now, I was wondering how this was going to work out between Gemma and Jake. Um, but evidently, Trig, you know, he heard Duda. He heard him loud and clear, very clear, when he told him to let that mofo die. But Trig wasn't about to face his little brother, Jake. He saw his, bro his brother saw him there. And then he know that that's Jake's girlfriend's dad. You know, he couldn't face that, you know, f telling him that Gemma's father is dead. So, of course, he did the right thing by dialing 911. And then he had his homeboy, Rashad, who I still don't like. I do not care for Rashad, but maybe next season he might start rubbing off on me, especially what he did when it came to Amani this episode. But we'll get to that later. But for right now, yeah. So, Jake, he ended up doing, I mean, Trig ended up doing the right thing, called 911. His homeboy, Rashad, you know, who he had been beefing with, came through in the clutch, came to pick him up and gave him a ride home. And then Gemma, as we had saw last week, she had slept at Jake and Trig's house. And not wanting her to find out so soon what happened to her pops, Jake was like, you know what? Don't go home right now. Stay, just stay for breakfast. Why you got to leave? You know, he had to find some excuse to keep her at the house, thinking, you know, Trig, that would give Trig and Duda time to clean up the mess, discard the body, because I'm sure Jake didn't know if her dad was dead or alive, you know, at that time. So, yeah, she stayed, but she immediately found out from the news reporter on the television that her father, Marcus St. John, was in critical condition. He was admitted to the hospital with multiple wounds to his head but for what the news was saying the authorities believe that his injuries could have been related to them to the mayor which is duda of course um because of him defunding the police department now that sounded good you know for the press for rumors sake that sounded good but we all know that is not what happened it absolutely had nothing to do with defunding nor the police <laughs> but now i must say this I do consider what Jake did as very noble, even though he was about eight hours too late. You know, because when Gemma saw the news, she hurried up. She tried to run home. You know, she's crying. Her father might be dying. So she's trying to hurry up home to get to the security footage, the security cameras, which is all around the house. And Jake, you know, he probably was thinking, well, maybe she going to be mad at me. She going to be mad at me. But maybe... If I let her know the truth before she gets to the tapes, maybe she won't be so upset, you know, or maybe he'll look be it'll look better for him to do something like that or whatnot. So that's what he did. He came out and he was honest to her. And he basically told her what she was going to see on the footage. But what surprised me was how Duda didn't know that there might be security cams throughout the entire house. I'm like, did y'all even check? No, they didn't check. And I'm glad there was footage because while Duda was threatening Jake that he better hope Marcus dies from his injuries, he was on camera beating the snot out of Marcus. So whether Marcus lived or died, Duda still could be in a world of trouble. And the entire police department and their supporters already got beef with Duda. They would just love to see him being arrested for murder or attempted murder. But thankfully, thankfully, the doctor said that Gemma's father, he's going to pull through. He's not going to die. Um, therefore, Gemma, she ended up promising a trick and Jake, that she's not going to release the tape, being that Jake helped save her life. Because had it not been for Jake, Duda, he wanted that man to die. And he warned Trig, let that man die. 
but Trig didn't listen. He ended up saving his life. So now Emma, I guess she felt like compelled to kind of have Trig's back, you know, which is a good thing for, for right now, for right now. So Jake and Emma's good. Emma and Trig, Trig is good, but Duda and Trig ain't so good. Trig now has to take, and he's trying to use it to his advantage over Duda. So before I get to that, the night before, when Tracy and Duda was having drinks at his place, clearly they both were not in the same mind space. Duda played it so cool at the press conference when being questioned about Marcus's injury, injuries. So Tracy, she did have good reasons to ask him about his involvement. Like, did you have anything to do with that? Do you know about that? Are you the reason why Marcus is in the hospital fighting for his life? And of course, of course, Duda claims he ain't had shit to do with shit. But did she honestly believe him? Because right after that, she started expressing her love for him, telling him, I think I'm falling in love with you. And I'm up here like, is she serious? Is she faux real? Like, is she faux serious? I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't call it. I couldn't call it. But then I was like, maybe she does believe him. Maybe she did believe him. But then, of course, the next morning, Trig showed up explaining to Duda that he has to take. Duda, who just thought that Trig, you know, wanted some money for the tape, he never considered that Trig would basically tell him, skip town get the hell out of dodge and don't you come back no more no more hit the road jack <laughs> man duda never considered that Trey would want him to leave town and just like duda and duda fashion he threatened him to basically turn his world upside down he threatened tree he threatened jake he threatened amani he threatened everybody talking about he'll get jake put out of school he'll get trig put back in prison he'll take away amani's permits, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, wow. Wow. And just like, how in one breath can you say, Jake is like a son to you. And then in the next breath, you threatening to kick him out that prestigious school. And then the only family that he has, the only family that he knows, you threaten to throw his brother back in prison. So yeah, do the He's always been a snake. He ain't never been shit. And that's exactly why Trig knew to keep Jake at a distance from Duda. I was like, wow, come on now. Jake ain't had nothing to do with nothing. But then, you know, I really don't care what happened to Rashad because I, I still... Rashad hasn't grown on me yet. He's an asshole to me still, and I just don't like him. But, but, but again, he did do something really nice for Imani um, this episode. So I got to get him that. I got to, mm, you know. But anyway, he get his little brownie points this episode. But Imani, Duda had better not mess with my girl Imani, okay? Mm -mm -mm, we gonna be on his. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. Um, after, uh, even after telling Trig that he could have his entire family just disappear just like that, Trig wasn't budging. He wasn't budging. So Duda, he had better skip town, you know, before the press be all over that footage. But then I was like, hmm, I didn't even consider the fact that Tracy still might be there from the night before. She was there last night. When she asked him, did you have anything to do with Marcus? I love you. I think I'm falling in love with you. You know, all this shit, right? So then when Trig was on his way out of Duda's place, he said, oh, tell Tracy I said hello. He knew Tracy was up in there. I didn't even consider the fact that she had actually stayed the night and was still there, but should have known, should have known. She overheard everything, everything. Duda just like last night lied directly to her face he lied in her face and now she knows everything but my question to y'all is do you believe that jake i mean that trig is the only one with a copy of that tape or do you believe that he might have made copies or do you believe that Gemma might have made copies of the tape you know for a little bit of security of her own i find it hard to believe that it's only one copy of the tape. I find it really hard to believe. Now, moving on, no, moving on, moving on, moving on. Um, as far as Nina and Dre, 
Let me know how you feel about their relationship. Their relationship is still very, very fragile right now. Uh, Nina, she obviously, you know, wants to work things out and everything. Hey, 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 Dan, how you doing? Hey, thanks for coming in through to the chat. <laughs> we just reviewing the shy, the finale, by the way, of the shot. But yes, um, Nina and Dre, their relationship is still on the rocks. It's really fragile right now. Nina obviously wants to work it out, promising to do whatever it takes, while Dre, on the other hand, is completely torn and against any type of reconciliation. So why is she still there? Like, that just kills me. How two people be in a relationship and they can't stand each other's guts. They are going to fight and cheat on each other, but nobody wants to leave. Like, why are you still there? Just leave. But anyway, anyway, I don't know if they're going to continue living together and being angry at each other, avoiding each other. I don't know. But see, that's what you get when you just assume your spouse is cheating on you. And on the flip side... As far as Nina goes, I mean, as far as Dre goes, that's also what you get when you keep secrets from your spouse. So they were both, to me, at fault. To me. But y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. And then, now they are about to have Lene, another mouth to feed, uh, and another person to provide for, living in their home. That compiled on top of their relationship drama. I don't know how this is going to play out, especially with Kevin and Lene having feelings for each other. Can somebody say playing house? <laughs> as soon as they move Lene in, Nina said, keep all doors open. <laughs> and with the type of parents that Kevin has, I don't know why he thought that his parents would have allowed them to share a room. He was like, she can sleep in my room. And wrong answer, Lene can sleep right on the couch in the living room where they can keep an eye on her. And Kevin, you sleep in your own bedroom with y'all fast asses. <laughs> you said, so you know there's another one. I had saw it and know that makes no sense. Child, it's, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. Everything that's going on in this. Oh, my God. It's just so much trouble. I love it. I love it. I know I don't review all the different type of shows that a lot of other people uh, review. I just like to really review my select few that I really, really love and enjoy. Uh, but anyway, and that's for a whole nother, whole nother story. Now, um, back to Rashad, Trigg, and Amani. Okay, when Rashad and Trig got back to Trig's crib, Rashad, he, you know, he thanked Imani for throwing him his welcome home party. And I actually thought when Trig told Imani that Shad had something to say, it was going to start off with, I'm sorry, or I apologize, or could you please forgive me for disrespecting you, especially being that Imani is the lady of the house and his boy Trig's woman. Mm-mm-mm. He was like, what else do you want me to do? What else do you want me to say? <laughs> and she was like, well, I guess that's a start. I guess that's a start. But then later on, we saw how he actually came to the fence of Imani. Um, some guy, and it looked like they were walking down a street or an alley or somewhere, and some guy had brushed up against Imani really hard. And Rashad and her was just walking down the street. And so Rashad threw the dude, he him the dude up all on the brick wall, telling him he better apologize. He didn't want to apologize. And basically he warned him. He said, man, you either apologize or I'm going about to, uh, I'm about to lose my parole. Rashad was not playing. And that's why I said at the beginning that I think maybe next season Rashad might start rubbing off on me because right now I still can't stand his ass. But yeah, he was willing to break his parole and everything. But even though there was no further incident with that guy, y'all let me know what y'all think because I have a feeling that they, that is not the last time that they're going to see that guy. I think that I have a feeling that they're going to run into him again. And it seemed like they already kind of knew each other. Now, I don't recognize the dude, but we could have seen him before in prior episodes. But if y'all recognize him, let me know what his name was, because I don't know. I don't remember him at all. But yeah, it seemed like they were very familiar with each other. I mean, the dude knew that Imani was born a man. So that's how I figured they must be familiar with each other. But anyway, anyway, moving right along. Let's talk about Tiff, Emmett, and Dante. Okay. Now. Let me say this first and foremost. 
What could have given Tiff the idea that that? Oh my God, Dante. Okay, okay. I ain't even gonna ask y'all because I don't want y'all put y'all business out there. But I'm sure y'all know somebody who had a whole man, a whole man at home, and they were cheating on that man with some side nigga, and then they tried to get a whole relationship with the side dude and the side dude was like, uh-uh, I'm just a side dude. Your man at home, I ain't trying to be booed up. You, a hey, hey, I don't want you like that. I just want you when I want you. We good. We just sex partners, booty buddies, you know, just knocking boots, whatever, you know. I, I don't want to be in no relationship. So I don't know what could have given Tiff the idea that Dante would want her to break up with Emma to be with him. <sighs> He's a side nigga, too. And just like most side niggas, they don't want to be with you. They just want you when they want you. <laughs> especially, especially, like, guys might cheat with some other man's woman. But then when it comes to being with that woman, they're like, oh, hold up. You cheated on your man. You cheated on your baby daddy, your child's father, to be with me. And, and I'm supposed to trust you. So... I was like, girl, go ahead and pick your lip from off that ground and take your butt on home to your husband, somebody who really loves you and who has been breaking his neck trying to prove it to you. Like Emmett was, has been trying to be faithful and true and doing chores and bringing money home and taking care of their baby. And he just been doing everything on top of his mother, Jada, who has cancer. He's been taking care of her, cleaning her house, cooking for her. All the, He's been doing everything. He has a lot on his shoulder. And she out here cheating because she wants an open relationship. But, but, I don't know. I don't know. You can't say Emmett wasn't trying. But then she had the nerves to be surprised when she came home to find out that Emmett was leaving that ass. She was like, are you serious? And I'm thinking, girl, are you serious? God told you ain't nothing. You ain't nothing more than a fuck buddy, a fuck partner. Then you allow the only man who truly loves you to walk out on you. But you'll see, you saw how she eventually came to her senses and told Emmett exactly what he wanted to hear. She's going to close up their marriage as long as he doesn't cheat on her again. Or at least that's what she told him she would do. She told him what he wants to hear. We're going to get back to that, though. Now, Jada and Emmett. Um, okay. Emmett, he went back to his mother's house. You know, he was helping her like the good son he is. I love that about Emmett. He might not be the perfect father, the perfect husband, perfect boyfriend, but he is such a perfect son. Um, He was back in his mother's house taking care of her, vacuuming her house. Um, His mother, Jada, then got a phone call from her doctor who told her that her last rounds of tests looked really, really good. It looked like that she was going to be so coming along so much better. Yes, she seems stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. You're right, Deanna. <laughs> but yeah, her doctor told her that um, hopefully she'll be able to avoid another round of chemo if she keeps getting better. So as long as she stay on the up and up, no more chemo. And that was so sweet and thoughtful image. So, you know, throw her a party to celebrate her, most likely, you know, being on a successful road to recovery. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Mm. I've been talking all day on the phones. I did an earlier video earlier. Now I'm doing another video. So, yeah, I'm kind of parched. But anyway, throw kind of dry. But anyway, anyway, um, everybody was there. Everybody was in, in attendance. Even her young boyfriend, Suede. You know, the one that Emmett doesn't really care for. And I think Suede, what does he do? He um, He's like a masseuse. He gives massages and he can come to your home with all the equipment. That's how they met. He was giving her a good old working all the kinks out of his mama. And he's young. That's why Emmy don't really, you know, have it for him. But anyway, everybody was there, including Suede. And then we see some guy pushing up all on Tiff. You know, her one of her edible customers. I was like, damn, Tiff, you just told Emmett two seconds ago that you're going to keep your legs closed. You're going to keep your marriage closed off to these other Negras. And then she hook up with her customer right after Jada's party? Like, ain't that... 
if that ain't so foul. Like, okay, if you don't trust Emmett not to cheat on you anymore, then just grant him the divorce that he asked for. Simple as that. He asked for a divorce. He said, if you want to keep an open marriage, he's going to walk. You can do what you want. No, she don't want to do that. No, she don't want to do that. She don't want to grant him the divorce because Tiff won her cake and she wants to eat it too. The same way Emmy has done her for year after year after year. And I just can't help but feel bad for Emmy, even after he dogged her in the past. Because to me, I could be wrong, but it seems like he's trying to do everything to make her believe that he's going to be faithful from now on. I don't know. Tiff is just, she's just, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, Keisha, and let's talk about another relationship here. Keisha and her corny co-worker. I can't remember his name right off the top of my head, but they have still been hanging out with each other, but he didn't quite know how to address her to his friends, which made him a little bit uncomfortable. So he thought, you know, well, I thought, I should say, I thought that it was really cute and romantic of him to handpick her some flowers um, after he handed her the flowers. He then gave her a note, like how we used to do back in the day, old school hunty, get a man a note, or I ain't even gonna say man, the boy, get a boy a note. Or the boy would get a girl a note. Do you like me? Will you be my girlfriend? Will you go out with me? Yes, no, you know, stuff like that. Except for R said yes, no, maybe so. But there, his said yes, no. And of course she said yes. She actually said yes. And I think that this might be good for her. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Do y'all think that he would make a great boyfriend for her? Do y'all think that he might make a great father figure for her baby? I think he's very cute. Uh, he's very smart. He got a job. Uh, he is a little corny. Uh, he's not typically like the street person that she might be used to. But I think this would be good for her. You know, he's really showing her that there's somebody out there who really cares for her and will treat her right after all that shit that she's been through been held hostage, kidnapped, molested, raped, and then the predator knocked her up, got her pregnant, and she had the baby. It's like she done been through so much stuff, so I'm hoping that this relationship works out really big, good. I just, ooh, child. Woo. Hey, j Don, what's up? <laughs> what's up, honey? How you doing, boo? What's up? I be all up in your chats. Y'all be having me cracking up over there. Ooh, when Jay Doug gets a going and going off, Lord child. <laughs> but yes, yes. So let me know. Okay, I got questions. Okay, look at my bra strap. Y'all ain't even gonna tell me my bra strap showing. My little black bra. But um, let me know what y'all think. Okay. Now this was the finale, right? So as far as Let's see. As far as Imani and Rashad, remember when they was walking and Imani um, got into it with that dude? Uh, he disrespected her and basically Rashad, you know, hemmed him up on the wall. Do y'all think it's going to be the last time they see that dude? Because when he, when they turned around and they walked away, I just knew that the dude was going to pull out a gun and shoot either Amani or Rashad, if not both of them. I was just sitting here like, no, 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 too much shit is going on right now. <laughs> I can't take it. Not on the finale. But um, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you caught my live too. I appreciate it. But yeah, I just knew something was going to happen. But anyway, anyway, okay. So Candy Girl, you know, Rosalind, you know, Candy. Y'all know Candy, Escape Candy, Housewives Candy. You know, she plays on uh, this season of The Shy. And she plays uh, she plays um, uh, Duda's estranged wife. So uh, she at the end, we saw she at the end had picked him up. And he told her to take him as far as he can go out of there. So it seems like for right now that he listened to Trig and he's skipping town um, because he's scared that Trig might show the cops the tape of him beating uh, Marcus after death and putting him in the hospital. Do y'all think that he's gone for good? Let me know that. Um, also, 
as far as Gemma, do you think Gemma is going to keep her word that she's not going to reveal to the police who it was that attacked her father? And do y'all think she got multiple tapes? Um, okay. Uh, as far as Tiff, who Tiff and Emmett. <laughs> Do you think Tiff is going to get caught with that dude, the the customer, edible customer by Emmett? Uh, I don't know. Or do you think Emmett is really going to leave her? He did threaten to leave her. She wouldn't close her legs and close their marriage. Uh, but right now, as you can obviously see, she lied. She lied. She lied. That old heathen, that half of that nasty hoe. She done lied. Told him good and well. I love you. I want to be with you. I don't want no divorce. I promise I'll stop sleeping man i will close our relationship back you know i will close it up because it's been open for a minute it's been open for a minute so do y'all think that emma will find out that she's still around and will actually leave her huh. i don't know y'all hey lady virtue what's up what's going on what is going on? Y'all, this episode was so good. I'm glad that um it ended on a good note. It, it leaves a lot of questions, um, but it, it was left on a good note. It seemed like most of the people's relationships um are doing pretty good. Then we have, of course, you know, Nina and Dre. Uh, Emmett thinks his relationship is going good. He don't know that his wife just slept with another nigga right after she said she wouldn't anymore. But yeah, I really liked how this episode went. And again, uh, it is the finale. Uh, I don't know how long they go in between finales. If it's like once a year or so. I mean, seasons. If it's once a year or whatnot. But but. And that's okay. That's okay. Y'all know I do reviews on different TV shows all year round. Once one goes off, I'll just pick up on another one. And I usually review the same TV shows year after year after year. Uh, one of the other shows I'm reviewing right now is Power, spinoff three, Raising Canaan. Um, I just did a review on that the other day. Um, I just did a review on Sisters the other day. Um, Power, spinoff two. That should be coming back on, I think next month yeah i think next month and then oh okay ruthless how many y'all watch ruthless y'all know i have a ruthless tv show facebook group for those of y'all who like ruthless i got like 400 people in there boy we be up in there cutting up talking about ruthless and all the things they be doing in that cult oh child i can't wait till the new season come on on that one Hey, April Walker, you said you don't think Duda's going far away. You don't think so? See, I don't know because he told his wife, Rosalind, he said, take me as far away as possible. So I'm like, well, where the heck they going? Down south? <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> hey, Laverne. Hey, what's up, boo? Yes, I'm sorry. I saw you was calling me and I kept have to reject it because I'm like, I'm on live. I'm live. <laughs> Like in uh, how T.S. Madison be saying, are we live, bitch? We live. <laughs> but that's okay, Laverne. I was going to call you as soon as um I get off of here. So I'm going to call you back as soon as I get off. I'm about to wrap it up. But yeah, I don't know about that, um, Lady Virtue. You might be right. He might be like, take me as far as away. And then as soon as they get somewhere, he'd be like, nah, forget that. I'm coming back. So... I don't know. I don't trust Duda. I really don't trust Duda. But again, I have a feeling that Rashad, I'm going to warm up to Rashad next season. I think he's going to start rubbing off on me. Um, when he did what he did for Imani, um, he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that because first of all, he wasn't feeling her because she's actually born a man. And I guess he didn't think that, you know, men should, even if they become a woman, you, you know how it was. And so, now I'm, I have a feeling I could be reaching, but I have a feeling that next season Duda is going to come back. I don't know if it's going to be right at the beginning of the season, but I think Duda is going to come back. And I think Rashad might be the one to be running with Trig. I think Rashad, him and Rashad is going to team up to do away with uh, Duda. Wouldn't y'all like that scenario? 
I don't know. Mm, yes, he is definitely showing some growth. Definitely showing some growth. But I like most of these most of these um actors and actresses on there. I'm really really loving. I really like Kevin. I like Papa. I like Jake. Even though I thought that was wrong what he did to Kevin, you know, taking his girl or whatnot. But and I really like Papa, and I hope that him and his girlfriend get back together. Uh. Next, um, Maisha. I really hope Maisha and Papa get back together as well next episode because weren't they so cute together? Like, they were so cute together. I'm like, oh, Maisha, Maisha. He probably was up there singing. <laughs> but yeah, give Papa another chance. But yeah, so <clears throat> I'm excited too. When I heard that they had renewed for another season, I was like, Yes, bitch. We're gonna see the shy. We're gonna see the shy for the season. And I'm hoping that it'll go a few more seasons as well because it's really good. And I think that the way that they've been doing the storylines and the characters, I really think that these characters have a lot more life to give for a cup, at least a couple of more seasons. You know what I'm saying? I would like to see um Imani and Tria get married like they've been together for a while but i would like to see them get like officially married i would like to see that house where all them girls was held hostage and forced to you know lay on their back you know and make money i would like to see that house get totally remodeled and it become a house for like a women's shelter or something there's so much more i want to see like in this show so and then candy like candy you know, from Escape, Housewives, Candy. She just appeared this season, but she really didn't have a huge role season. I mean, she really did. And I love me some candy. So no shade, no shade. I really love me some candy. I really like candy. I follow her on everything, YouTube, everything. But um, I hope next season, even if due to Lee's, that she has like a bigger role, you know, that we can see a little bit more of her acting, you know, what she can do acting because we see her so often on reality shows. And I really want to see the actress and her come forth. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, so yes, yeah, Papa. Yes, Papa and Maisha, they could be a beautiful power couple. And like they both have like these platforms. And I know Papa was a little jealous of her. And that's why they, you know, broke up and whatnot. But I think that they could both like use their platforms for different things and still come together and use both of their platforms to like help their community and whatnot. Because even though this is a TV show, it's Chi Town in Chicago. And we know in real life there's a lot of things that's going on there. So I see them as a a big power couple. I truly can. I truly can. But yep. So that's all I have. That's all I have, y'all. Everybody who came in and joined me tonight for the finale of the Shy Season Four. Thank you. I appreciate you. I had fun with you guys tonight. Thanks for dropping down in the chat to the people who drop. I love when people drop down in the chat and talk instead of just hanging on to the bushes, hanging on to the vines, lurking. But um. Like, share the video, subscribe to the Hood Table if you're not already subscribed. And if you feel compelled to join the Hood Table membership, official membership, just click the join button. It's only $1.99 per month. Really cheap, really cheap. Less than a cheeseburger at McDonald's. But anyway, anyway, thank you, Lady Virtue. You enjoy your night as well. And um, on that note, everybody, stay safe. Be blessed. Remain vigilant at all times. And don't forget to keep it hood. Bye. Oh, I forgot. Ooh, ooh. Hold up now. Hold up now. Hold up now. Let me go ahead. Drop this link. Hold up. Hold on. I almost forgot. Here's the link to my backup channel because we did create uh, the Hood Table backup channel. The backup channel is called the Hood Table 402. Um, It's the same. It has like almost the same... Uh picture, the same cover picture, the same profile picture, the same layout. So it looks very similar to the hood table, but it's the hood table 402, which is my area code. So please click that link in the chat and please subscribe to our backup channel. We are trying to get that channel up to a thousand so we can have a backup channel because it, it makes me so sick to my stomach to see 
people getting other people's channels just taken down and some people might have smaller channels some people may have humongous platforms um we just seen like the so youtubers is their platforms just disappear youtube just snatch them away so i decided to make a backup channel as well so that's the link in the chat so please click the link to the backup channel please thank you so very much i appreciate you guys love you guys have a wonderful night be blessed oh yeah and mask up because that doggone new variant of rona the ugh, is taking people out so mask up mask up y'all i ain't gonna tell y'all to get y'all shot because i ain't judging i ain't judging if you feel like you don't want to get the shot i'm not judging you but at least mask up y'all on that note I'm out. Peace. Deuces.